Hey, there's Tom Stevens, your resident psychotherapist from Reaction Therapy, here to break down a movie with Melanie Martinez in it. K through 12 is the name of the film. We're going to take it piece by piece, one part at a time. See what you think, see what I think. Never seen it before, and I can't wait because I finally get to see what's behind Melanie Martinez and all of the music that she creates. You know our purpose, spread mental health awareness to the world through music and lyrics. So you know what? Without further ado, let's just get into this. This is so exciting, I can't wait. Melanie Martinez, K through 12, part one. Was my dream again? I remember feeling trapped in rising heat, and there were plastic or cardboard cutouts all around me, and my gums roots were pushing out my teeth, and the voice of a thousand angels said to me, it's temporary. Oh. Maybe that should be my mantra as I step into what will inevitably be the worst years of my Look at that, how she's obviously at during school. She has literally, to me, the best videos with color and with creation and with fantasy. She does an amazing job with that. And obviously she's getting up on her first day of school. I think this is a story about the school system, K through 12. <clears throat> Excuse me, but the first day of hell and she goes up to the calendar and she puts a heart around that day <laughs> it's gonna be the worst experience of my life my life ah uh, yes off to a world in which girls are to only wear pink dresses and boys oh boy pants. well i dyed my uniform and embroidered flowers on the sleeves <laughs> Speaking of, I should probably change it to my uniform right now. <laughs> this is amazing. Now, wow. Now, shit's itchy. It can wait. Oh, yeah. And in my dream, you know, when the air below me was sucking my teeth out of their sockets, I noticed that my front two teeth stayed. And the gap between them just kept getting larger and larger. How's that even possible? I know, right? <laughs> I wish my mom wasn't passed out right now and could at least drive me to the bus stop. Oh, poor thing. It's, you know, you notice all the things about yourself. She has amazing hair. The the two distinct colors of it. And just how she seems always perfectly put together. But image, and she's talking about her teeth. And everything we all see about ourselves when we are in school and we start to be around other children, especially when you get... Uh, into school, but uh, in and uh, progress through the elementary days where everybody starts pointing things out and we all compare ourselves to others. Alpha bites crunch. Wish my mother wasn't passed out. One clue number one there, having a mom that's not attentive. And so she's parentified, she's having to raise herself here and take care of herself, which is so sad, but it happens all the time. <laughs> Felipe, <clears throat> what are you doing in there? Whoa. Don't scare me like that. Hmm. Oh, that's so cool. What was that angel's name again? So cool. Is it Lily or Layla? No, I think it was Lilith. Well, Felipe's a spider, obviously, she's friends with, that was in the cereal, nonetheless. And her kitchen, total pink. Like, it's just all perfect girly pink. And I wonder what's going to happen when she goes to school. And what grade is she in right here when she's doing this? A pink bus. Oh, boy. These are like all grown-up people, you know, but they're playing children like going to kindergarten, it seems like. And you got the driver who's drinking, driving, all the kids doing their thing, and she's left all alone. I feel so sick. Mm. I can't believe we have to do this. Do you think we'll make any friends? I hope so, but at least we have each other. That's true. I wonder who that is. Mm. 
seriously? No kidding. What does it say? Real mature. Oh. Go on. Does the bunny rabbit need some tissues? I bet she has some. It's okay. Just ignore them. Hmm. Just plastic assholes. Bunny rabbit, and then they're plastics. It's like Mean Girls. And she's just trying to hold it in. This is a classic story, though. It's a classic story of what happens when children go to school. And by the way, kids aren't born this way. They really aren't. They learn this. And we have to do the best job possible as parents to show, show children. It, we have to be kind. We have to be caring. Children will be kind if they are modeled that all around them. But when it comes to this, we're better than you. We have more than you. We can do more than you. You're worse than us. And then they point out flaws in children, which is just sad, ridiculous. <clears throat> all gathering around now. Gang up. You know how many people I've talked to who tell me they kind of join a group like that so that they're not the ones to be picked on as well. And so they might not come, they might not complicitly like be mean to her, but they'll be kind of a part of that group so that they don't get turned on as well. And this is ridiculous. Oh, this, this Kate's through 12 years. I know it's going to be music in this too. Some of her music in the movie. Yes, sir. Just looking out the window and it's cold outside. There are two boys yelling me hot. Being terrified. Counting trees as they pass me by. And I'm trying not to look across the aisle. Because my is letting Dan put his hand up her skirt. And she's got her hand down his pants. Man, she has like magic powers. This is so cool. She can make him drop his cig. He's drinking. Her eyes turned black. Got these people going at it. This is like a mixture of K through 12, right? So obviously the kindergartners aren't going to be going at it like that. But as you grow up, this stuff happens on the bus and it just gets okayed. I love it how she's happy. <laughs> she's so good. <laughs> she's pointing out the different people around her. Her friend next to her is so good at just literally sitting there and staring. And she points out the people making out and getting down next to her. And then she points out the guy behind her, Moon, and everybody outside. And, and she's able to, and the driver, obviously, who's seeing some of this. And she makes them kind of pay a little bit for their shenanigans that are going on, hitting a bump and having him drop. She's so good at being able to have magical powers to keep control of her world. And this makes her fantasize, like that fantasy piece helps her cope and get through it. It's so sweet. I know the driver sees it. I know he's speaking in the rearview mirror. He says nothing, trying to ignore it. He's talking boring and quietly observing. I'm saying. Oh. 
So other people have powers too in this. That other girl had powers to be able to blow up his hands and make them so painful. And then the cool part here is I'm seeing this girl who's part of the big group who's singing along to the song. And it's like this girl behind her is like, stop. You're not supposed to be doing that. That's not cool. That's not us. That's her. We're not doing that. I love that she's joining in because it is fun and it's sweet and it's nice. And that's what you want. Because I don't think she'd be doing any of these freaky moves and powers if everybody was kind and sweet and nice. <laughs> Everybody. Don't give a fuck. Wheels on the bus. I'm holding it down. Up in the front. Wheels on the bus. Wheels on the bus. Whoa. Oh. He sees even that too. And it's like this boy comes in and notices Melanie and sees her and comes up to her. But as soon as that girl started having smoke coming out of her ears, angry, he's like, nope, I got to go to that. Pushes her aside and plays along the part. It's what people do. We don't stop and be kind to each other. And notice what we want. We just keep going with the same doggone thing. That was something they were like together in it and both said, okay, let's do it. Turn on those powers, eyes go black. And it's like they're driving the bus now and moving it wherever they're wanting to move it. This is making sense now with the different videos of hers I've seen that have been down the road. Really, this is cool. It's also like her blonde hair side of her hair changed because it was like a rainbow, a multicolored blonde hair. And now all of a sudden it's just straight blonde. But they were able to steer that thing out of the water and up into the clouds. And that's why I think they're saying it's so much better up here. Like we're above everything. We don't have to deal with reality and the stuff that's going on. But we're still with all these flipping people. And they're scared. Oh, wow. There we are. Still got to go to school. Hmm. I love 
<laughs> they don't even have to turn around. For a minute, I thought maybe he was a nice guy, but nope, he's just trying to get a peek. And they're like, you are such a loser for doing nothing at all on that bus. This is such good mental health, this whole movie, because it's the depiction of what so many people go through when they go through school, period, right? The comparison, the judgment, the mistreatment, authorities look the other way, don't pay attention to bullying, don't pay attention to what people are doing socially. And all these kids are just, you know, doing their stuff, getting away with it, and learning that it's okay to do that, which I, to me is completely wrong. But they're going to do it alone. They're going to do it on their own, and at least they've got each other. Remember, mental health matters, and just because you've been through stuff like this doesn't mean that's who you are. It doesn't define you, that as you grow up, you can realize that was then, I can now create my own reality, and maybe all people aren't like this. Huh. K-12 school. I don't know why people are so scared of death. I agree. It's just another part of life. You start in the womb, and you end in the tomb. Wait a second. Where is everybody? You start in the womb, and you end in the tomb. <laughs> That's a little depressing. But her hair is different again. Now it's all in a braid on both sides, which to me was a little bit different than the start. Maybe not, though. What a school, though, with all of these statues and ancient kind of relics. I don't know if it's just because it's cold in here, but getting kind of a creepy chill down my back. Mm. I love it. <laughs> what even was that? Scary. <sighs> What's the room number again? 222. Two, two. Two, two, one, two, two, three. Two, two, two. Let's say first grade. Yep, first grade. Snorting the chalk dust. Would you like to inform Crybaby and Angelita of what rule they did not follow today? So it's Crybaby and Angelita. So I guess she's Crybaby then. When the bell rings, you must be in your assigned seat. What are you, deaf? Sit your asses down. Sorry, Miss Stephanie. Just so much how it feels, right, with certain teachers, especially younger grade teachers. Like, they got to be more kind. There are some great ones out there, honestly. But, man, we remember those ones that are rough. And all these children who are crazy on the bus are now just, like, sitting totally still. All must stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise. Henry, on your feet. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. I'm being generous with you, boy. One nation. Last chance to stand and show some respect. With liberty and justice for all. You hear that? Liberty and justice for all? That's bullshit. Grab the boy. Get this one. Get off me! What? I didn't do anything! Take him to hold him. Put him on back. There's that boy. You know, it's so true how I just picture young children. That's what I've done in the mental health field for so long, specializing and working with children, adolescents and teenagers a lot. And it it's giving a great depiction of how it feels a lot of times for people to be in school. Like he feels misunderstood. He feels like things aren't fair. He feel it doesn't mean 
it's okay to do whatever you want to do. It doesn't mean it's okay to not follow the rules. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying a lot of children feel mis misunderstood. They feel mistreated. They feel like teachers just want them to order them around and for them to follow direction. And it's scary for other children sometimes, like Melanie, to see somebody be treated that way and taken away. These tables are really cool because they make them seem so small in this room. But here's this cute guy who turns around to talk to her. Uh-oh. Kelly had a fat ass and trouble was cooking. <laughs> she had a boy wrapped around her finger tight. I fell in love with him, but he wasn't in my life. The teacher gave me notes to go out and give Kelly. She was kissing Brandon, I got jelly. <laughs> I wanted to be in her shoes for one day I just waited till recess to make her pay Uh oh <laughs> Nap time it's like replaying these stories of young children, you know, I'll get you on the playground, so to speak. And she's like telling the story of, I like this boy, he's cute. Some other girl likes him, so I can't have him. And, you know, maybe I'll make her pay. Maybe I'll get her back. All the dynamics that happen, even in young grades in school, where children, it's a survival test sometimes. What a cool movie. Uh-oh, too much snorting, teach. Teach too much of the dust. Oh, man. There we go. Nap time. I think she's trying to like rip my head off or something. Well, what are you gonna do? You gotta defend yourself. I can't defend myself. I don't know how to fight. I just, I, I don't even know how to do that. I don't even know, ow. Hold it together, girl. <laughs> we are capable of doing whatever we want. Remember? That's so cool how she's standing up for her friend. Angelita's like, look, I will show you Slaps her in the face, like, hold it together, straighten up. Don't break down, don't weaken. And this is kind of the lesson in school, right? Is to learn to stand up for yourself uh, and to not let bullies push you around and to not let other people manipulate you into thinking you're less than. And so she's got a friend that's able to help her. And this is so much of the nap time thing when you're really young because some children just can't nap. It doesn't work for them. And then they end up thinking, when we go to the playground, I'm in big trouble because she's going to attack me. But here they go. They're going to plan something. No, I can't. It's cheating. It's cheating. Wow, she's honest. Do you really think we would have these abilities if we weren't supposed to use them? Mm. I don't know. I just feel like I'd have an unfair advantage. Well, I don't know. Why don't you call your mom and ask her what she thinks you should do? My mom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's okay. She must she's not know. Probably sleeping right now, and honestly, uh, I don't even think that she would pick up the phone. Wow. So Angelita doesn't know her mom. She's not gonna pick up. We'll see. The old rotary phone. I had one of those. Wow. Passed out. Too much drinking.
kind of asking mom advice. What should I do? Of course, mom's passed out. Worst role model possible here where she's not there for emotionally or physically at all. And daddy chimes in, go for the throat. Like, just take her down. you got these two competing pieces of advice there of what to do. Like, take them down. This is kind of the thing when somebody picks on you. You just beat them up, or do you go tell the teacher, or do you just stay quiet? Same dynamics that happen in school, and so often parents do have two completely different pieces of wisdom or advice to give their children. Which do I do? Go for the throat, or do I back down? That's her. Oh. Snake. And that girl's mean. So mean. Then she ends up waking up kind of from the nap, almost like she was subjected to having the snake around her neck. Like that's actually what happened because the fantasy was them crawling away. The reality was <clears throat> the girl came and put the snake there and she had to wake up with it again, being mistreated and bullied. Playground for display only, do not touch. Don't have any fun. Don't enjoy yourself, that's funny. she was wearing like it was embarrassing for everyone and like i told her I yeah they have to, to get helpful. along i gave her advice i was like that's ugly mean girls oh he's staying with her and she just she took it like personally she was getting all mad about it i was like i'm helping you stop oh Don't interrupt me don't understand why you wouldn't take my advice i give really good advice to people and it's just a, are you she's so absorbed with herself she cannot think outside of her own self and they're all seeing hey something's going on behind your back you been listening to me oh Wow, she just full on attacked her, cuts her with a knife. The dude's even scared of this girl. He gets up and runs away like a little baby. And her friend's there, look at this, her friend's there smiling now like, okay, she did it. This is what she wanted her to do, fight back, stand up for yourself. You think we wouldn't have these powers if we weren't supposed to use them? And now Lord knows what she's about to do to her. <laughs> Teacher snorting it up. Dang. What the fuck? Her face was locked <laughs> up and her hands doing? were bloody. Put me down, you freak! We were in the playground, things were getting muddy. The teacher broke us up after I broke her. And the one true love called me a monster. <laughs> Why do I feel sad? Feels so sad. Number one, the guys, I guess what she's saying is my one true love called me a monster, which I guess may be that guy in this story, but that's what happens. Like she had to stick up for herself the only way she knew how and got her back. Of course, the girl calls her a freak when the real freak is her for attacking her that way. And she knows how to stand up for herself, but she's going to pay for that because everybody saw and how lonely that is, right? She's, she's just trying to make it in school and didn't do anything wrong, and now she's being called out, probably. Would have thought that young ladies like you would have been grown up better. better. My mom spent good money getting these ears done. You have really blown it this time. Sit down. I mean it. Hmm. I shouldn't have lost control like that. She's not a bad person. She's just projecting her insecurities onto me. She didn't even leave a mark on me. I broke skin. 
Interesting, isn't it? The end of part one. Melanie Martinez, K through 12. What a beginning. I want to keep watching. I want to keep watching. I want to keep watching. I'll have to wait. You'll have to wait. We'll do this together. Watch this movie together. I think it's so interesting now. They're all sitting in the principal's office waiting to talk and witnesses the people who are involved. And that girl just is so full of herself. And Melanie's like, now she feels bad because she was mean. This is tying so much together for me. I love this. Cannot wait for the next one. Remember, this is such a story of life for so many people. And when you grow up into adulthood and you've experienced all this in childhood, it plays a part in your relationships and dynamics with other people in your workplace and your friend group, all kinds of stuff the rest of your life many times. It doesn't just disappear. So that's why mental health matters. That's why getting therapy matters. Remember, this isn't real therapy though. This is just Tom watching an awesome movie from Melanie Martinez. If you want professional love, check the links. Leave us your comments. Go to our Discord server and chat about Melanie Martinez K-12 through also. But let us know what you think because mental health does matter. We'll see you on the next Reaction Therapy. Reaction.